Good morning, everyone. We are on day four. Uh, had an off day yesterday. Just had some stuff going on in the house. It was a good break to lift off the project anyways. I did come in and do just a couple real minor things. On the door hasp on here. Ran into a small clearance issue, just something that I hadn't actually thought of. Um, this is a longer handle on this. So when this is in here, my LED is kind of in the way. Um, so with this mounted, essentially, I can't actually get this in to close close it. So a couple options. And this is a simple fix, but a couple options. I could swap this out for like a key cylinder or something for a couple bucks, and it would work. Um, I'm not going to open and shut this a whole lot. My solution is just going to be I'm just going to go ahead and clearance this handle. Just take a notch out, I kind of measured it out and everything, so essentially it will it will clear this LED and then you know, I'll just have to make sure when I use it I have that side on it and uh, I'll paint it up and everything and, and clean up the edge and all that good stuff. I got the heat sinks all mounted on top. Turned out just like I wanted, I think they look really, really good. See on the top there, so just like I wanted on the front, you don't see the lip. You don't really see the back lip on the back. You just see it on the sides, which is exactly what I was going for. Uh, volt app meter. Popped it in last night, and it's got like this this subdued gray, but it's but it's even like a lighter gray than than you know contrast on this backsplash. It looked really bad. It just really stood out and not in a good way. You know, usually the colors you like a contrast of things, but not not this. So. They had the film covering the the screen on it already to protect it from paint, so I just scuffed it with some 400 grit and actually hit it with a, a really light mist of primer and threw the metallic on there too. And as you see, I think it looks really good. I could have done like a black too, like a flat black would look really nice, or even like a sat, satin black, matte black. Um, but I'm going to get to wiring today. Excited about that. This is the last piece is to get DIN rail in, get all the wiring and everything done, and then get it on the panel. So we're gonna get after it here. Before I get into before I get into wiring, of course, I have to have the components in the door and in the DIN rail mounted and everything to to be able to even have something to wire to. Before I put the DIN rail in there to know exactly where I need to go, just like before, I'm going to go ahead and populate this and I'll be able to see when it closes exactly kind of like up or down where I want to put the DIN rail. Obviously left to right is completely saturated. So I'm going to go in, I do have silicone and this, this these do have like the little gaskets on it, but there's just enough wiggle room in these openings, which, you know, it's not like I laser or CNC these or anything like that. So they're going to get put in secured with the, the backing plate to, to help hold it. You see here it has these little little spring, not spring, but uh, the little flex pieces to, to snug it up and hold it tight on there and I'll probably stick like a level across there and, and silicone them all in place. Get the timer in, again populate this and then and then get after uh, the DIN rail mounts and then, and then get it wired. Like a kid at Christmas. talking about on the sides. Well, surprisingly well for what it is. Wow. 
I'm going to put an extremely small opening on this. Kind of want to just open it up to how big you want your feed. silicone all over everything. There we go. I can get my silicone on there. I can put my sleeves on there. Look at that. That's like three sixteenths of an inch. Woo! Just things, you know, that aren't fully captured in the engineering process or the design phase. Sets. I'm going to go ahead and get the trim rings on here. down to that frame to get one last notch and kind of compressing that gasket a little bit and just making sure it's a really nice tight seal on this. You know and mainly it's, it's so that these things don't wobble around at all. You see there I mean that's really nice and straight. You can see by the line there the gap that's extremely straight as well. Mostly <laughs> that looks really good. Okay, to ease the timer in, well, everything's siliconed up on the back, so while that's drying, which I do need it to dry just so it doesn't move or wiggle that little bit, I'm going to go ahead and start loading this panel with all my LEDs, switches, key switch, all the good stuff that's going to go in here before I start wiring. on the back here of which direction the wires will go in and out. Some of these I got components right next to it so maybe I want to go horizontally, maybe I want to go vertically. Everything is kind of dependent on where I think it's going to work best to, to route wires. I mean, for example this one, I don't want my spade to go into the bottom of this so I'm going to go left or right because I got a little bit more space. And space is going to be a commodity, as it, as it has been in this whole build. So, and as they get wiring in here, which is going to be a lot, and that's going to prove itself even more. Just like with a lot of the other stuff with this, uh, I'm going to back these out with the drill down and put them in by hand so that I can feel how tight it's going. I mean, I want it to be tight, but I don't want to break the switch or you know, warp the panel or something to, like that. Okay. 
Tighten these down. I'm looking to make sure that I am as perpendicular as I can be. I'm also looking because there's the two, the two set of screws on this here and here. So you know, I don't want one all the way in and it's like this or it won't flush up on my panel. There's a little, little gasket here, so I'm just kind of looking to see when that gasket collapses and this collar kind of presses against the front panel. Check all my contacts too. That, like I said, so you see these here. If I mount them sideways, I'm going to be in this gasket with this connection. Same way if I mount a vertical, so I went at a 45. So hopefully I'll have enough to, I can either take and bend the spade like out or go down and around or something. Because I obviously, it's like I can't interfere with this. And, and more importantly, it's like I can't interfere with this lip on the door. Look how close that, <laughs> just wow. Very, very close. EPO, so the EPO, you know, there's so many designs with this stuff too. Um, you don't really need an EPO, really. Uh, you don't really need a key switch either. It's just kind of all like cool little things. Uh, but I could make the room, if I was going with like a like a real 12 by 12 panel, I would definitely eliminate these pieces, but I do kind of like the idea of just being able to stop the element and, or either element and the um, and the pumps with, with just a quick hit. This one I do have to add, a, it's got a normally closed on there, which will be, um, and then I gotta add a normally open Too. I'm just going to kind of look at the orientation and how I, how I have this. I don't think it really matters if I got the normal closed on the inside or not, just as long as I wire it right. But to keep it in line with my diagram for ease, uh, that's what I'm going to do. So I'm thinking of when I'm putting these on here. This is a move to this side. It's assuming it clears this door, but then I have more room to work here with the spades. Uh, and it should make it, I'll check it. Obviously I'm gonna close this up in just a second. So alternating or trying to alternate so that when I come in to wire stuff, hopefully I'm not right in the way of each other just to give myself a little more room in these couple spots. That's a lot in this panel. It looks really good. Oh my God, it shuts. She's a beaut, Clark. <laughs> there it is. That, uh, that looks like something, doesn't it? You know? So here's the EPO. So hot liquor tank, mash tun, boil kettle. This will be water pump. This will be work pump. Laying everything out. PIDs. Uh, I might have been able to fit a larger timer there if I really wanted to, but all that did was basically read out the same thing as the as the other uh, line that would be on the just like the PIDs are. Only you know PID has like current temp and then set temp. And maybe this had set temp and actual current time or something, but to me, as long as it tells me time and then the, the add-on bonus of this is it has the alarms, that is all I need. But to go through the panel real quick, this is my element select. I did, I chose to go with a, a three-way switch so that I can't accidentally 
flip both elements on at the same time and the LED. So this will only this will light up when it fires, you know, on either one. But this will light up when the switch is on, and I got the element selected, so I know that like hey, I have an element on LED two-way switches for each pump. So again, I know they're on. And then these are all timer switches. Not critical on that human LED on all those, it just doesn't make sense. But same, you know, in line too, so hot liquor tank alarm, mash tun alarm, oil kettle alarm, and then this is like the timer alarm um, that will, and then this is an alarm buzzer, so this will flash and then it will also emit the, the buzzer tone. And then here's my stop reset button for my timer. The go button will have to be still ran off of this. I thought about doing potentially two smaller buttons there, but I didn't. For the aesthetics of the panel, it's like I got to be pushing this to set my time and everything anyways, so who cares? But uh, man, that looks nice. Um, looks looks really good. I'm I'm happy with this. Looking at with this, wherever I put my, and, and we looked at this before, but wherever I put this den rail, I need to make sure I have room to work on the top side of this, that I'm going to clear this because this is definitely really deep. I also don't want to be too low because I still need to be able to put my, put my outlets right there. And I mean, you see that that is it's very tight, as is that. That one's going to be really fun. There's going to be so much cable management that has to happen with this. Got my table set up here with pretty much everything I think that I need to wire. Kind of thinking about my plan of how I'm going to attack this. I would like to keep my back plane out, do the wiring on that. I want to pre-wire my outlets and have like the tails hanging off and mounted in the panel. And also get my SSRs mounted onto the heat sinks. Uh, what I found was I'm going to have a clearance issue with how far these SSRs stick out. You can see there that essentially I'd have to put my back plane in and then mount my SSRs because once I have my outlets in place, uh, you know, I'm not going to be able to like ledge it. I'm not going to be able to like slide it in underneath and then drop it in because I would hit on one of the sides. So being that most of this real estate up here I should not need except for cable management really. Um, or even potentially I, I'd like to just stick with a box I think I'd like to keep these pieces kind of separate as much as possible so I'm going to probably clearance this back plane like take it just trim off I think that lip or I'll mark it how far out I need to go and just take that off uh, not that I want to break out and have to cut and grind and drill more stuff right now because I absolutely do not but might as well just get it done okay back plane is clearance just like if you're doing like heat some kind of computer or anything I'm going to go ahead and clean both of these surfaces up or all these surfaces rather with some rubbing alcohol 
just to get oil or anything left over, transit shipping, you know, or manufacturing, or whatever, or just me handling the stuff. Clean surface with a thermal paste to go on. These are actually in really good shape. I didn't pull that much off. So, and, and, and just like doing it, you know, I'm going to wear a glove because this stuff gets like into your pores and like it just doesn't come off. So you can use a Ziploc bag or something over your over your finger too. That works pretty well. Um, we'll start with that much, I think. So I don't end up with a so I don't end up with way too much uh, all over. I'm going to just put it on just the heat sink side. So just looking at this SSR, you have the output side and the DC, the DC in that triggers it. Um, even though the DC is actually coming from this side, my relays for my AC is going to be on this side, which they're going to be much thicker cables. So I think I'm going to put my my AC routing to the left. And then the, uh, the DC, so I'd have to come in and swing around and go in, but I don't think that's going to be that much of an issue. So I'm not getting this all over. These are slotted on the end, so I'm going to go ahead and on both of these actually go ahead and start to screw it one side. The goal is to not smear thermal paste everywhere as I'm trying to find out where the Pull is to, to get this in there. Found a pair of strippers that work. Buy the ones are garbage, trash. So I'm gonna go ahead and proceed to continue wearing these up. These two, you want to make sure that you're not on the insulation. Sixteenth of an inch of shiner, which is the copper that you're able to see there. And if I wanted to get real picky, I'd get a different stripper that you would actually make a nice clean cut. Uh, I'm also trying to keep this quick, so Here's the 15 amp 120 volt. Like I mentioned previously, really, I think they won. So these, these come tied together to make this a single switch or, or a single hot or whatever. You can break these uh, and keep the neutral link because that's your, you know, that's the other side of the circuit. And then I only got to run one wire, you know, one ground. But here I have to run two separate pots. So one side's going to be pump, pump one switch and the other side's going to be pump two switch. So, you know, one side, your water's on one. So one side of the switch is going to be wards and one side will be water pump. So just like this, I'm going to go ahead and pre-wire this. For this, I need a neutral, a ground, and then two separate pots. 
pump one, pump two. So this is 12 gauge wire. It's just what I had available to me. It's gonna work. It's definitely bigger than it needs to be. But what matters on it today is is what your load is gonna be. So you, as long as your load doesn't exceed, I mean, you, granted, you wouldn't want like four out gauge feeding something because that's just insane. But uh, it's your load that's gonna dictate your, your wire size and my load's not going to see the current capability of this wire. And I'm constantly, constantly referencing my schematic here that I've drawn out. This was done over uh, multiple weekends, multiple days looking at this thing, trying to think of everything that I might have forgotten. But I'm constantly looking at it because this, this is my roadmap to, to what I need to do and the hope is obviously when this is done that it fires up and I don't fry anything it works on. So looking at this though, one of these is going to be for colors I'm using two, the two hots instead of using black like you typically would for a 120 outlet. Uh, I'm using a gray and a brown so I know which is which. So my water pump's going to be gray. Only I think I want to run my water pump. At. Now that I'm, I'm thinking about it, I think I want to run my water pump to the, the top outlet. So let me get that wired in just like that, everything else on here. The neutral and ground leads don't need to be that long because they're just going to go to my DIN rail block. But the two hot leads are actually going to hardwire right into these two switches. So I'm going to do a pretty good tail on there because I'm not quite sure how I'm going to route those cables. And I have plenty of wires, so. And you just kind of land it in there like I think it might, it might potentially run. Or else, obviously. on here, uh, but this is stranded wire, and since this outlet doesn't have a clamp on there, I gotta have something to make sure I got a good connection, so the way to do this too is that I'm not pushing a lot of current, I want to say it pumps like an amp or something, so I always remember like brass is black, so brass is your hot. So this is my neutral. Lots of outlets too. Sometimes they got the little inserts on the back. They can just push the wire into. I hate those. I freaking hate those. Um, I fixed so many outlets in my life that those things get worn out and were making heat and they're loose, so they were making heat and you know, and literally were like frying the back. I always, always go out of the stuff because you can get a good, nice, tight connection. I guess I'm all size holder girl. That's the reason why. 
Only thing left to go in the bottom is that the uh, wire holder for the actual input. I'm not going to put that in yet though because I still want to be able to stand the, stand the box up because I'm going to be here in a second. Popped a couple of these off so I can get a third screw in here. You see I got it blocked up on board so my screws aren't digging into the table. It's not rocking back and forth and everything. Three contacts on on this build. So three coils on on this build. One is my main power, kind of like uh, main power feed slash shut off. You know, so when I when I turn my key off, it kills this breaker, which cuts power to everything on the panel, minus the the neutral and ground that are going to be on the block and, and the power that would be here. Well, and then the hot beats the key switch, but that's it. You know, all the power, all the instruments and everything gets, gets turned off of that. And we got a coil. Then I had a coil for each element. So the hot to the coil. Everything else is just all kind of supplemental connections. Just like before, we're going to go ahead and build out what makes sense, like what runs from here to here, and then also from here to here. And Maybe we pick tell before we go ahead and pop this thing in. I'm gonna go ahead and open up all my all my contacts now so they're ready to go. Prep work. Black and red, which is my two hot feeds, which are my two locks. I'm just checking how much I need to strip. This is too much, I got too much under showing, so. Trying to get it done. I'm not hurrying though. Um, it's going to get done when it gets done. I'd rather make sure that it's done right. I am on 12 gauge now. This is a, you know, by sending the power into this, is basically energizes these blocks or will energize these blocks more time. Um, this is my six amp circuit breaker that basically feeds the, the rest of the entire panel. So, let's come out and, and feed this with some 12 gauge. My 10 gauge width for my, to ground the, the box and the chassis and everything. Uh, that's got to be 10 gauge, that's what we got coming in. There's actually not a lot of connections down here. This is Believe it or not, the easier stuff. It's, it's this back panel that's really going to be the work. And these are all, all three of these coils. They're, they're relays. They're relays. Have a 110 volt coil, meaning it only takes it takes 110 volts to energize them. But then they're double pole, so you know, I'm passing two points. But I'm going to need a neutral 
to, to go into my neutral bus and then you know, to energize all these, like this one will get the key switch that powers it on, this one will get a, the element or 110 from the switch from the element select. So, you know, when I'm on hot liquor tank, it'll send 120 volts to this coil to energize it. And then when I'm on boil or boil, it'll send 110 volts to this coil to energize it. Okay, I think I'm going to do, I got a top 10 gauge, so I'm going to go ahead and run my red pigtails off of my coils and my bus here to basically be able to tie into my SSR, so that's done as well. That essentially feeds the SSR one side. Side. All right, I'm at a good breaking point that's ready to go in. I'm going to tidy the garage up and give myself a little bit here and uh, come back in just a minute. Okay, we are ready to drop this back plate back in, kind of pull these cables out of the way and zip tie it to the case here so that it's not giving interference. Plastic nut for the grounding uh, lugs on all these are for stripping out right away. Uh, had to search through my stash. I'm pretty sure this is electric. Uh, found some pitch verified, I guess, with my three thread kit, but I got three nuts okay, so. Get it put together. outlets into the relays here and probably start routing stuff up to the SSRs, start getting some stickies and stuff down so I got some paths for cable management and I think it's going to be starting to work stuff over to the door. Okay, I turned the camera off for a while. This, this was getting very, very tedious. I'm not going to shoot all that stuff. So you see you know, I have these hard bends, and this is all about cable management and dressing properly. If I have to troubleshoot this, that's what's going to help me. And then, too, I need to have everything laid in here just right in order for this whole thing to come together and, you know, mainly like the damn door shut. Um, 
You see I have everything flowing nice here. I'm gonna make my path to come up and then feed into my two SSRs with the 10 gauge. I'm gonna mark these with markers so I know that they're the feed side. And then, um, you know, prep the, prep the hot liquor tank and boil feeds. I'm gonna to need to build my slack. This is basically all the stuff that initially has to go to the door. This is my 12 ga gauge power feed that's going to essentially power everything in here. It is my 16 gauge off of the coil that comes off the switch and it's the 16 gauge off the main power side uh, that is always hot in order to feed power to the switch back of the coil. So I'm going to keep routing this stuff. I'd like to get that wrapped up and kind of like onto the door and I think that's a good breaking point. way more brain power with this than I thought it was gonna. Uh, that kind of always happens, doesn't it? So, let me see how this is gonna flow. Right, so these are, these are my hots. What I ran into as well here, and I wanna make mention real quick, when I was doing maneuvering all this wire, this is pretty thick stuff. And it's, um, and it's stranded, so when I was rotating the wire, they actually came loose off of these outlets. So I had actually pulled both outlets out, tilt them enough to where I could get a screwdriver in and tighten them up and then put them back in. So it is very important to, to check all your connections before you fire something up. I mean, you got circuit breakers and everything, so hopefully everything should be protective if we did have an issue, but the goal is to not have it, that issue in the first place. We've got these both marked. I'm going to take my feed from my hot liquor tank, put an H, and then my feed from my boil. It doesn't matter if they, on the other two which goes to which because they're on the same bus. So I don't know if I'm going to bring this up yet. I think this will be when I feed into the panel and then I'll split it there. So I'll make like a loop here. So when the door closes, then that's my, you know, that's my idea. Uh, Okay, I got the SSRs wired up. You see here, I have pretty good cable flow, comes in, hits these. I still gotta run the DC from the PIDs over into this. It's gonna be a different, different uh, cord and wire gauge and everything. As far as getting feeds from this, minus like my temp probes, um, this is all the wiring that goes to the door. I did a lot of daisy chaining on the door because there's really no need to run all that all that stuff back and forth. It's like I kind of got all the busy work here and all here and then just kind of like a harness, so to speak, just kind of connecting the two. Um, this is going to be a ton of work tomorrow, but I think it's, this is going to be a ton of work tomorrow, but it is a good breaking point and uh, it's getting hot and I'm getting tired again. So it's good though. And, uh, this was a good, good place to be. I'm gonna button this up and clean up the garage and.
day is it? His day for this. Uh, I finished up, I guess, kind of where I thought I would. I, I knew I had at least two days of wiring. I'm definitely going to bleed into a second, maybe a third. We'll see. But I got all my outlets in. Everything's mounted. This turned out really well, I think. Just like I wanted it, everything's a flush mount. Those are all, all my sensors. That'll be my, my power end, which is going to be hardwired, so you know, less of a footprint. The front of the panel is all put together. I can't seal it, obviously, because i got wires coming out. The front of the panel is all put together. This also looks really good. i got to trim a little silicone on this side, but I'll, I'll get to that when I'm all fresh. All three PIDs, volt amp meter, timer, all my switches. It is a very, very full panel, but it all fits in here. Looking inside, everything's mounted, siliconed in that we did earlier this morning. Outlets on the bottom, not a lot of room as expected. Everything does seem too clear though, as I you know, wanted or needed thus far. I had a couple little things, uh, but you know, a couple little changes too with the design, just where I was going to put a wire here, wire there. But this turned out to be my cable flow. I think it goes really well. You see my SSRs, uh, as I've shown, come up into the top. So this is good. I have at least another day, and uh, I'll be back to it then. So and until then... We'll see you tomorrow, or see you the next day, or yeah. <laughs>